Alrighty. Yay, we're live. Hello, everybody. How's it going? It is... Feels like a really warm day today here again. Let me just go to my comment section so I can <clears throat> keep up with everybody's comments. It's only 77 degrees, but I am I am just burning up. You know, yesterday our temperature was more like 50, so you know, a 27 degree jump is is uh, pretty big. All right. Who do we got today? We got Carl. How's it going? Hey, Crittenden. Hello, Ivan. Hey, Steve. How's it going? Hello, Tyler. Hey, Robert. <laughs> Hello and good evening, morning, night, or afternoon. <laughs> yeah. It's for everybody, you know, tuning in from all over the world. It, it's various times of day. But here it is. 4 p.m. It is tea time. So, stop that from moving. So, yes. Um, oh, hello, Kinarder. Hey, Ocean Liner dude. Stalin, how's it hanging? Hey, Ryan, what's up? All right, so. Looks like we're all ready to begin here. So I'll go ahead and start dumping these things out. Yeah, that's good. Even though it's a warm day, I, I still preheat the china just in case never be too cautious with this stuff. Alright, that'll just sit and heat up for a moment. Alright. Mr. Zantastico says, Hi Alex, how is your day? Love your ventilator video, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, my day is going very well. Um, I, you know, have been busy working on different projects and things, and, and, uh, my computer is also just completely overloaded with, with tons of files and things, so today I went and just kind of tidied up the computer, believe it or not, because I, I, I have to download so much stuff every single day just to make videos, just to have conversations with people and stuff like that, and so... And so the, the computer was just completely overloaded with stuff and it was just scattered everywhere. So I just kind of just went through and cleaned everything out and and then uh, had to do some dishes before I did tea time. So everything's good. Kind of a warm day. Um, Air says, yay, my first time in your live stream. Awesome. Glad you can make it. Hey, Rochelle, how's it going? Um, Rochelle asks, where did you get your model trains? These are all the ON30 scale, and um, I got a few pieces off of eBay. I just looked for good deals, and then there were some other pieces I got from a train show. When I lived in, in Orange County, California, uh, I went to this train show one year just to see if people were selling anything for cheap, and I was really lucky. I bought a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that was technically worth way more than it should have been, um, way more than what I paid for, I mean. Um, and so I was able to walk out of there with some really good deals that day. I was so happy. So I have a, a, some of the stuff here is from that train show. So yeah, you've also noticed I've set up my Titanic in the back just for fun, you know, just to change things up. Um, no, the trains and the Titanic are not the same scale. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Zantastico says, I really appreciate what you did in that video about recreating the engine room in the Queen Mary. Oh, thanks. Yeah, uh, the Yarrow Project is something that's always fascinated me. You know, when I was a little kid, I was walking in the boiler rooms and I saw a, I saw a big poster 
of a Yarrow boiler. And ever since then, I was always wondering, what was that? Who created that? And I did a little bit of research a couple years back on the Yarrow project, and I thought, that sounds really cool. I wonder why we don't have that. And, uh, but it's like so weird. It's like small worlds. Like now I know the people who were involved in making that project. And now here I am, uh, helping them to at least complete a video that was never completed, you know? So that's just really cool. Just something fun to, for people to enjoy. And of course, to enjoy Ernest Borgnine's narrations. He did fantastic narrations, um, all written by my friend Steve, of course, but, but, uh, with the, with the help of everybody at the Yarrow Project. But, um, but yeah, the, but the Ernest Borgnine narrations were amazing, and they weren't going to any use. So, you know, I was like, people gotta hear this, you know? Um, <clears throat> so if anybody hasn't seen that, 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 uh, that video yet, it's the teaser trailer for The Queen Mary Story. So it's a little four minute video. It won't take much of your time. I highly suggest you watch it. You'll hear a segment of the Ernest Borgnine narration and it'll give you a taste of, of the, um, the documentary that's to come as well as the informative video about what the Yarrow Project is. Um, so there's lots of really cool stuff there. Hey Ken, how's it going? Skidoo is here, what's up? Uh, I forget Skidoo. Is your name Henry? I'm trying to remember. I've, I meet so many people on YouTube all the time, so... But, um... Yes. Uh, Robert says, I love train shows. I got a big war train set for $25. Rail cannons and all. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, that's really cool, because uh, the train shows... Uh, I had I had never been to one at the time, and so I was when I was going there. I was kind of like I didn't know what to expect. I, I knew I'd see a bunch of trains set up, and that's really why I was going. I wanted to see the trains, but I thought you know there might be some really cool things I'll be able to get. And lo and behold, I was able to get so much cool stuff, including building materials. So I was able to get like little scale model pieces of lumber that I could use to build the structures and buildings. I have so much of that stuff now. I don't even know what to do with it all. Uh, and I and it's crazy because it was like a, it was like ninety five dollars worth of lumber, and I got it for five bucks, <laughs> because the guy was just like, please take it. So I so yeah, I was just like, I was like, yeah, I'll buy it because everybody, it was like the last day of the train show. Everybody was packing up, and the guy was just like, I have all this lumber I don't want to go back home with, and I. I only had like 30 bucks on me, maybe $40 on me that day. So I, I couldn't buy a bunch of stuff, but it was just, like I said, there was just so many people selling their own stuff for cheap. I was, I was able to get that. So I walked out of there with, I think the most expensive item I bought was actually brand new. And it was, uh, it was special powders that you weather things with. So if you need something to look rusty or you need something to look dirty or something that looks dusty, um, you can buy these special powders and they permanently go on whatever model it is you're making and it makes it look, you know, nice, like, like rusty and dirty and whatever you want it to look like. Um, and so I bought some of those. Those were the most expensive things I bought, but even then I got a good deal on them because they were still, each one, was a few dollars cheaper than what I could get online, which added up to like 10 bucks cheaper uh, than if I had just bought stuff online. So I saved a lot of money that day, and some of the cars that I bought, they were in real bad condition. The, you know, I think most people would have just thrown them away because people just like pristine looking train cars. But I thought, you know, in real life, this stuff got pretty beat up, you know, like, so I don't mind. I, I, I bought it anyway, and, and all it needed was some new couplers and things, some cleaning. There was a spider living in this one, and boy, that scared the crap out of me. But I was able to get that spider out of there. So, um... Alright, time to... Time to put some boiling water in here. There we go. Alrighty, uh, Osha Miner Dude says, When I have time to go to the Queen Mary later this year, I would be excited and scared at the same time. Really? Scared? 
Not because of ghosts. Don't be scared of the ghosts. There's, I haven't seen any ghosts there. It felt like a happy, wonderful place when I was there. It felt, it felt loved. It felt like, like the like, you know, Queen Mary had been around for a while and she was well loved by people. You could feel the 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 happiness just oozing off the walls, pretty much. It was really amazing. All right, put that there. Hope that works. Ow! It's hot. Okay, good. It's brewing. I was like, I was like, I don't see any, any tea coming out of the. Okay, there we go. Uh. All right. So the tea today, you guys, is a little bit of a surprise. I'm trying this uh, Queen Elizabeth tea. I don't know if you guys know, but this month marks the uh, <clears throat> 70th birthday of the Queen. Is it? No, no, no. I'm sorry. Not so. <laughs> oh my God. Where's my brain? 70th year reigning of Queen Elizabeth over Britain. So this is her 70th jubilee, basically. So. Uh, I don't know why I said 70th year. She's like 96. But anyway, um, yeah, so my friend Mary, uh, she, she sent me this, uh, this tea and it's, it's British. It's from the United Kingdom. Um, well, I mean, it was obviously the stuff was grown in Sri Lanka, but, but it was put together in the UK. So it's an authentic UK recipe, if you will. Um, and the box celebrates the, the Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth. And um, whatever your opinions are on monarchy, I'm not going to fight you over it, you guys. I'm not going to fight you. Um, but, uh, but whatever your opinions are on monarchy, I do have a special appreciation for this woman. Um, because in life, you don't always get to choose your path. Some people have a much nicer path than others. And, you know, but um, you don't always get to choose your path. But it's what you do on your journey that defines you. And Queen Elizabeth has done a lot of amazing things for the world, and um, and she's a really great person. So she's been one of the people that I've kind of, I don't know the right word, uh, not necessarily idolize, I don't idolize her. Um, I appreciate her and her contributions. And there's a small list of those people uh, that that I look up to in, in life and among them are you know various family and friends and stuff and you know at one point Walt Disney and as well as the fact that um, uh, another another person I always looked up to was you know Julia Child because uh, there was a chapter in my life where I was working to become a chef and I made it to that position thankfully and and I was really inspired by Julia Child because I felt she was a lot like me just someone who started off as a as a cook, as an enthusiast, but really got serious about it. And so, yeah, so anyway, but Queen Elizabeth is certainly one of the people that I appreciate. Um, and so I'm happy at least just to be celebrating 70 years of her reign. So, um, all right. Uh, oh, I didn't even check what time I put the tea in the thing. Uh, I think it was like a minute or two ago. So I'll say 418. I don't mind overbrewing a little bit. I just don't like underbrewing. Underbrewing just doesn't it's, it's too light for me. But um but this tea is just an English breakfast tea, but like I was saying last time was I actually enjoy this tea a little bit more than the Twinings breakfast tea. So so far on my list it goes Twinings Earl Grey Queen Elizabeth breakfast tea uh, and I would say Irish breakfast tea right underneath that. Yeah. That's how I'll list it. Dangerous Brian says, I have been watching your Disney videos. I have found them quite interesting. Thanks. Yeah, you know, I always feel like 
uh, I've always been the kind of person where I'm willing to learn about something new, uh, even if at first it doesn't interest me. Um, and then I just decide from there if it's something that I like. And so um, I know a lot of people aren't Disney fans, and I don't hold that against them. Um, but, uh, but I do think that my Disney history videos are, are pretty interesting, and I still have a, a several more that I need to finish up um, and post and stuff like that. I'm waiting to do a Pirates of the Caribbean one uh, because right now the, the original attraction at Disneyland is undergoing a refurbishment, and a lot of times when it undergoes major refurbishments, it comes back a little bit altered, and so I want to reflect that in the newest video. So I'm waiting on that one. Um, yeah. We'll see. But yeah. Um, and then the, let's see, what was the video I put out recently? The, the, the one about the ventilation on the ocean liners. That was one I really wanted to do. But I have a feeling that I already got something wrong. And it had to do with the Queen Mary on that video. Because, so sometimes, you know... You, you can never know everything about anything. And, uh, and so sometimes I learn something and I'm satisfied with it. But then as time goes by, I learn some more stuff. And so in my video, I posted just, what was it, yesterday? I said that, uh, like, I listed off the um, eight main giant ventilators on the top of the Queen Mary and where they go to. And I have this sneaking suspicion I got that wrong because uh, there are three different basic sizes. There's the large, the medium, and the small ventilators on the top of the Queen Mary. And I have a feeling the medium ventilators uh, ventilated the boiler room one, the forward turbo generator room and the after turbo generator room while the larger um, ventilators uh, ventilated the main boiler rooms that's boiler rooms two through five uh, and the reason why I think that is because the Yarrow boilers there was a lot more of them in each room than there was the scotch boilers in the first room. So the scotch boilers in the first room wouldn't have needed as much air pumped into it. So I'm thinking the big ventilators, two of them worked for each of the main boiler rooms. And so that just changes around the whole thing I listed. But that's the nature with learning, you know, history and learning technology is sometimes you just rediscover new things. So... Uh, Steve asks, are you using KD couplers on those, or are they couplers that came with the cars, locomotives? Um, th th in this scale, uh, well, well, in this scale, O N thirty, most of the equipment is produced by Bachman, so, um, so Bachman. They, they put their own couplers on there, and a lot of them were magnematic couplers. Um, I should specify for people who don't know about models, the, the couplers are the things that, that link the cars together, and, and the ones that, that uh, are used in North American railroads is uh, quite often something called knuckle couplers, because they resemble someone's knuckle, and they kind of just push together and stuff. Um, and the the brand that I've noticed that it, when I bought these engines uh, was... What was the brand? Um, Bachman. Bachman knuckle couplers. So I continued to buy Bachman uh, magnetic couplers um, because I was worried about what would happen if I changed it up too much? Uh, yeah. I know that's a silly thing to worry about, but, but you know, like, when you don't have much money to spend, you're, you, like, you always want to make, like, triple sure that you're buying the right thing. So I was just like, you know what? Might as well buy the exact same coupler. Except there is one difference. 
there must have been a change in the design of the magnetic couplers over the years because these are the the old cars and the spring for it is just a little stick of metal that when the when the knuckle opens against it the stick of metal gets pushed back and it, it can push back the metal and close the knuckle um but the ones i bought uh instead of a little stick of metal that acts as a spring it's an actual coil spring that is linked to it and so there was a change in design somewhere along along that time i think it's because the new ones i bought are more modern so they have these tiny little you know microscopic <laughs> springs and stuff so uh let's see Uh, hey, Element, how's it going? Tyler, did uh, did Johnny Depp win his case? I I didn't know that they were um, that the jury was deciding today. For some reason, I thought they'd decide at the end of the week. But did he win? Jesse says easy mate. Yeah, I think easy mate is the is the is the one. Yeah, the ones I bought. Uh Thank you, Ozzy. Uh Steve, yes, they are HO scale couplers. Uh like I said, I thought about buying uh, ON30 or O scale couplers, but I was worried I'd have to buy all new couplers for the entire thing, and I didn't have the money for that. So I was like, I might as well just buy a couple of brand new HO scale, because they all had HO scale couplers. Um, so I, I didn't want to replace the whole fleet of couplers. Steve says, yeah, uh, Johnny Depp is receiving $15 million, um, and Amber is receiving 200000 in compensation for her countersuit. Compensation for her countersuit? She must have uh, won part of the argument in the countersuit then to, to get 200000 But 15 million, he sued for 50. So they only awarded him 15? That's so weird. I'm gonna have to, at the at the end of tonight or something, I have to go read, read up on what happened. Uh, Robert says, speaking of locomotives, I work on a 1942 Baldwin Northern Frisco 4500 or AKA Meteor, located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Sidharth. Yeah, right? Isn't that true? That, you know, Aquitania on the inside was so beautiful. There was, there was even more square footage of the Aquitania that was decorated than there was of Titanic's decoration. So it's the so not only was it more beautiful than Titanic on the inside, but the beauty was spread to more areas than Titanic. So yeah, it's a beautiful ship. Uh Oh, she got two million. Jeez, she got two million. Well yeah, I mean yeah, I mean glad she didn't get the full amount, but yeah, but she, yeah, she must have won something, some part of that.
Well, I think the the best thing to come out of this is that Johnny Depp's reputation uh, is on a better path, I think. The man is not perfect, you know. He's he's uh, he's got problems, but everybody's got problems. Um, but thankfully, I think that um, that with this public hearing, basically, or it pretty much is public because everyone's seen it. But um, but I think that it, it might have helped his reputation. Now it's a lot better than it was, you know, before. So that's really good, you know. Yeah, they both had issues. Yeah, they both had issues for sure. But yeah, I definitely do agree that the things that she had done, I I would consider despicable. <laughs> would not be. I would be. <laughs> I would move like to the other side of the world if I was involved with someone like her. Drew says, I have that same tea tin. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm having this one today in celebration for the beginning of the month of, uh, of um, the Queen's Jubilee. Sarah says, Blue, totally agree. I think he was more drug-induced. Hers was mental illness. I think that's pretty fair, yeah. I think that's, I think that's a fair assessment. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is also a little... It's like a postcard, but it's a drawing of Queen Mary. And um, and my, my friend sent that to me. It was like a, a pack of postcards. It's like a pack of postcards, basically. And I'm reluctant to send them to anybody because once they're gone, they're gone, you know, but... But I, I put one up because I thought it was so nice, but I don't think you can see it very well on the camera because this camera is only like 1080p at best. But, um, but yeah. Mike says, lots of thunderstorms today here. Where are you at, Mike? I know my, my friend lives in Idaho and he was getting all kinds of crazy storms just yesterday. Time for a sandwich. I have been craving this sandwich all day. <laughs> yeah, I'll see, I do remember Jack Sparrow. Ocean Liner Dude says, Speaking of June, I'm going to a lake with a cool fishing boat. Oh, awesome. Mike says, Northeast near Pennsylvania. Oh, I see. So, gosh, my week is really busy. Friday. Friday. I think I'll have a video out for you guys Friday. I think it's a video about why I fell in love with the Queen Mary. Um, Saturday will be some kind of live stream. I don't know what it will be about. It's not going to be a, um, a Abandoned Places uh, Queen, Queen Mary live stream uh, because uh, Steve will be busy and uh, frankly I'll be busy as well. Um, but um, but I will have some kind of live stream. Maybe I'll like live stream like Titanic or something like walking through Titanic or or maybe I'll live stream um, I would do railroads online, but well, I could do railroads online. 
Just something fun. Just something fun for people to watch. Something related to trains, ocean liners, that kind of thing. Um, let's see. And of course, Sunday is the next tea time. Yeah. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Thanks, yeah. This is, uh, keep telling people, um, it's a gift from my friend Mary, and it's uh, a box of, of Queen Elizabeth tea. It's a real UK product, and uh, yeah, I'm having it to start the celebrations of the Jubilee. Crittenden says, you just can't find good models of Queen Mary, QE2, or Olympic, just Titanic. Yeah, and often with the Titanic models, you you would have to alter them to make them like Olympic. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would love to have a model of the Queen Mary, but... The thing is, like, what I want is I want to have models of various ships. And even if I have to select only three ships, I want them to all be the same scale. I don't want them to be varying scales. And if they're going to be the same scale, I want them to be a good quality. Something that looks somewhat accurate or can at least be, you know, um, altered a little bit by myself to make it more accurate. But the biggest problem is there no, like, no one has been making accurate models of Queen Mary or Queen Elizabeth. They're always, I'm, I mean like um, like model kits, not, not individual model makers, but model kits. No one's selling accurate models of those ships. And the ones that they are producing, the, the ones that I don't like but they are producing, they're not even the same scale as any Titanic model. So there are no Queen Mary models in that scale. There are, they never have Titanic and Queen Mary in the same scale. It's, it's ridiculous because I'd like to have models all in the same scale. So anybody who I talk to or I invite over or whatever, if I want to show them the models and show them the size difference of the ships and the appearance difference of the ships, I want it to be accurate so people can see that not every ocean liner looks like Titanic, you know. Um, but it's crazy. There's all these model making companies making all these model kits and not a single one of them are producing models of ships that are still around like Queen Mary and QE2, you know, like they have the Queen Mary 2. They have that in several different models, but the heck if you'll find one in one three fiftieth scale, I mean, they're all like in one one thousand scale or something smaller. So it's ridiculous. Like you can't find models anymore. You'd have to build them on your own. Uh, yeah. Dangerous Brian asks, what do you think Walt Disney would think about the Disney company and the parks today if he was still alive? I think he'd think that they accomplished a lot, but at a cost. And the cost was was their own self-respect. I think that Walt would think that that a lot of the things that they've they've uh, they've done was only for the sake of profit, which was something Walt never wanted the company to do. He always insisted that things should be done for the sake of doing them right and having it you know, done um, in a manner that benefits the people who get to see those films and parks and things. But the company quite often makes decisions based solely on money and, as their CEO likes to say, data. So, you know, I think Walt would be quite upset with that. That's not what his company is about. Any CEO, though, would see that Disney has made a lot of smart decisions, but 
You know, that's the thing about the Disney company. They, they built their reputation not just on being business savvy, but also by providing the things that people want and maintaining a certain set of values that the company has. And the Disney company has lost all those values for the sake of profits. It's really sad, but it's inevitable. I don't think that really, you know, 30 years after the after the loss of the founding members, that any company would really be the same. When I say 30 years, I don't mean that Walt Disney died 30 years ago. I just mean that any company that loses its founders, within 30 years, it will change. This sandwich is so refreshing on a warm day like today. It's nice. I need to drink more water, though. I haven't drank enough water today. Crittenden asks any news on Queen Mary. Mm. Not really, no. Um, it's it's kind of the same old, same old. You know, work is going on. Um, you know, they're doing some restoration work in the um, first class smoking room. Uh, supposedly, they're going to be restoring the walls. The walls have this beautiful uh, tiger oak wood paneling. Beautiful ti tiger oak wood paneling. And uh, it needs restoration. I think they said they're going to do that. So that's something that's upcoming. Um, because at the moment, the, the varnish on the walls has darkened over the years. You can't really see the pattern too well. It, it's, it just looks like typical, you know, cheap wood paneling, which it's not. Um... But with uh, the varnish and the, 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 with the, the color layer reapplied and the varnish reapplied, a new varnish reapplied, the room will really pop like it's meant to. So all the rooms on the Queen Mary, today you, you see the wood, the wood paneling and it's so muddied from just years of, you know, age and, uh, and darkening. So a lot of the wood paneling around the ship is, it just looks generic from a distance, unless you are really, you know, well versed in, you know, the beauty of different wood panels. But, but it, once all that varnish is removed and replaced, the panels will pop. The ship will just, you know, just be so beautiful. But we'll see how much uh, they get to do. Hello, Trace. Hey, Fox, how's it going? Um, Tyler says, Alex, you said that Titanic always was destined to just be the second sister had she not sank. If that's true, then why wasn't Mauritania treated as a second sister when Lusitania came out first? That's because Lo Mauritania was faster. So Mauritania actually earned herself a reputation for her speed, and she held that record for 19 years. So, um, you know, the, the, the fastest ship gets the headlines, and the ship that gets the headlines gets the fame. So that's kind of how it works. 
That's what happened in Titanic was she really wasn't all that different from Olympic. Olympic had really stolen the thunder. Um, but Titanic took back that fame in a very tragic way. Um, Brian asks, I know things change, but do you miss the classic old hand-drawn animated movies more than all these CGI animated movies? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like CGI sometimes, but I miss when there was variety. I miss when, you know, when there was stop motion, there was CGI, there was hand-drawn animated movies. It was nice to once in a while just, you know, change up the kind of animation you were looking at. But, you know, both hand-drawn and stop motion are both, you know dying arts essentially because cgi is just faster easier cheaper um but yeah i do miss hand-drawn animated films um yeah and it's funny because sometimes disney will insert hand-drawn animation into their newer films for various things like that mary poppins thing but uh, to my understanding, that's not real, like, hand-drawn animation. There was a certain amount of CGI that was used to make it happen. So it just doesn't count, you know, to me. Uh, but yeah. Uh, hello, Wade. Hope the gardening's going well. Crittenden asks, will the Queen Mary's swimming pool ever open again? I th I have hope that one day it will. I I know what is really wrong with it. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what's happening to the pool room. And, you know, there's all these crazy theories. Just these crazy... I know what it is, and eventually I'll make a video about it. It is kind of a complicated thing to talk about, and I have to show people proof of everything, which I have the proof. Um, but uh, but it is kind of a process, and so I'm waiting for the the right time to post that video. But um, but essentially, it's not impossible to get that room reopened. It'll just be very expensive, and so um, so I have hope that one day it'll happen. You know, and I would love to see people, you know, taking tours of that room again, fully restored and, you know, stuff like that. But uh, the, the pool room is not currently on the priority list for repairs. There are a lot more important things that need to be repaired uh, before they can focus on things like the pool room. Uh, to answer your question, Robert, I wouldn't be too too thrilled about a modern Queen Mary. I mean, when you think about it, a true modern Queen Mary is Queen Mary 2. You know, it already exists. If you were to try to replicate the look of the original Queen Mary, you'd end up with a monstrosity like the Titanic 2. I did not think the Titanic 2 looked nice. There was so much wrong with it. And it was like... It was like taking a beautiful ocean liner and dressing it up in a big clown costume and parading it around as original, and it's, I don't like that, you know. So, um... Trace, to answer your question, um, I was just saying right now that the update is that the, that the, that the first class smoking room is getting a remodel, uh, not a remodel, but restoration work to the walls, um, and, uh, and then they've announced that they are going to repaint the third funnel, the famous third funnel that is chipping tons of paint, so they've announced that they're going to repaint the third funnel before the ship reopens. Uh, but various work continues on, installing the bulkheads and the and the water intrusion systems and the and the um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, bilge pumps. 
So, but nothing, nothing big. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't have photos to show you guys. I, I, there's nothing really because a lot of the stuff that's happening at this moment is happening behind the scenes. So, you know, there's no, there's no images of that. But um, Captain D's, I, I, I don't know. I'm sure. <laughs> Oh, see you later, Crittenden. Yeah, so, um, you know, let's all hope that the restoration of the ship goes really well and, you know, with very little, you know, snags and, you know, things going on. Uh, Ocean Liner Dude says, this might be a weird question, but what is the restoration pumps? No, no, um, the, the, um... Oh, so the the pumps that I'm talking about are the um, are the bilge pumps. The bilge pumps are pumps that sit at the bottom of the ship, and they're designed. Uh, they they use them for a few different purposes, but the main design is as an emergency system for um, for pumping out uh, any water that has leaked into the ship. It must be said there is no seawater leak. Uh, right now on the Queen Mary there there hasn't been the the ship does not have any holes in it it's not it's not leaking tons of seawater um so yeah but every ship needs a, a bilge pump system in case something happens and the Queen Mary hasn't had a functioning bilge pump system in well over 20 years if not 30 um so they need that but the other thing bilge pumps can be used for is uh when they need to adjust the 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 tilt or as we say the list of the ship um they will need to adjust the water ballast tanks on the ship and they can use the bilge pumps to adjust those water levels um in the in the ballast tanks um so that's what they need bilge pumps for and then there will be water intrusion alarms so if for some strange reason there was a a, a major leak or something on the ship uh, <clears throat> the water intrusion alarm will activate the bilge pumps automatically, even in the event of a power outage, because they plan to um, install a brand new emergency power generator. The one they had before was quite old, and it was no longer up to its its task. So they're replacing uh, the emergency power generator with a new one, and so that way, even if there is uh, a power loss, um, the bilge pumps can still be activated, uh, on emergency power as well as the fire suppression system and uh, and the emergency lights for uh, people to escape. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sidharth, I know of the Mauritania too, yeah, but I, I, I don't know all about it, no. Um, to answer your question, wow. Um, so funnels are not always for aesthetics. Their main purpose is to do is to do a job, and it, it's to um, ventilate the exhaust from the boilers and engineering spaces. Um, and so Queen Mary only needed three. You know, there was no reason to have four. So that's that's why. Titanic uh, needed four because the fourth one would ventilate the kitchens and stuff aboard the ship. So they had four for that reason. They, had, they used to use coal uh, to heat the kitchen stoves and ovens back then. So they had a lot of coal smoke that needed to be ventilated high up above the ship. So they used the fourth funnel for that on Titanic. But Queen Mary had electric kitchens. Um, so, you know, it's not like they had an excess of smoke or anything, but even if they did, where the Queen Mary's kitchens are located, 
is right underneath the third funnel. So anything that they did need to exhaust could be exhausted up the third funnel. So, um, yeah. But, uh, but you know, funnels and propellers on ships, it's not about the quantity. It's about what's necessary. Um... Fox says, what is your favorite ship, 1910s? From the 1910s, it would be... <clears throat> it would be... SS France. Yeah, SS France. Um... But it's hard to say. But I have a top tens list. So if you guys want to, if you guys want to see my top ten favorite ocean liners, I have that list uh, on my channel. It's a really fun video. I do, I do suggest you see it. I think you guys will like it. Um, Nick says, when people tell me the fourth funnel on Titanic was totally fake, I know they aren't that into ocean liners. They just have heard the common myth. Yeah, that that is a good test of of knowing how much someone knows is if they say the fourth funnel on Titanic was fake. Um, but uh, it's always important that when we come face to face with those people, we try to to educate instead of uh, instead of um, ridicule, because there's a lot of new people to the ocean liner community, and um, and sometimes the only way in is to is to learn about ocean liners. I'll see you later, Steve. Yeah, ocean liner dude, you're right. A major leak is highly unlikely on the Queen Mary. Um, Queen Mary does not have any holes in it. She does not have... She's very... And very her hull itself, the frame, the steel plates, the, the double bottom, everything, um, is in really good shape for a ship her age. Everything could always be better, you know, but let's not, you know, sugarcoat that. But she's in remarkable shape for her age. No leaks, no nothing. Um, even her hull plates are uh, an average of one inch thick, which is, again, remarkable. Um, and all of that can be thanked to the um, to the uh, breakwater that surrounds the ship to help keep the water around her calm, and to the sacrificial cathodic anode system that the ship has which um, helps to uh, to reduce the amount of um, corrosion that the ship would normally face in seawater. So those two things have done wonders for a ship that, you know, has been sitting in the water all, all this time. And, uh, and frankly, the Queen Mary, as long as she's in Southern California, she will need to float in water. So, um, so yeah, she's in remarkable shape. You know, she's lost the the glamour and the and the you know the softness of of her features, but all that can come back. You know, with some nice TLC and stuff. You know, the the ship can look very beautiful once again. Tyler, to answer your question, I think so, yeah. The 2004 tsunami may have... may have, um... spelled some major disasters for SS America. Hey, Glenn, how's it going? Hey, 
Hey, Scudster. So, to hear the soundtrack that I'm playing right now, it's in the description of the video. Um, there's a link to it. My friend's channel is the one that has these playlists. And so it's really good. It's really good. So the link is in the description below. Boy, the pollen today. I don't know if you guys know, I, I live in Portland, Oregon. And um, I live on the outskirts where there's more, like, woods and stuff. Um, but boy, during the spring, everything blooms. Like, in Southern California, everything is mostly concrete. So you don't really get too much you know, pollen and stuff. But up here, it's so green. There's so much nature. Everything's in bloom, and it just leaves my nose running all day. It's not so bad, though. It's not like, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it's not bad enough that I gotta take allergy pills every day or anything like that. I prefer not to be on allergy pills whenever I can avoid it. Sid Hearth, sorry to disappoint you, but Queen Mary is my favorite ship for a reason. <laughs> so, you know, people ask, you know, your favorite ocean liner of all time, your favorite Cunard liner of all time, favorite ship interior, favorite... All those favorites can be sent back to Queen Mary. Ocean Liner, dude, why were you secretly celebrating? Have I ever heard of the four days liner? I know that some ocean liners took four days to cross, if that's what you mean. <laughs> You're welcome, Sarah. Thanks for watching. Trace asks what my favorite movie is. A lot of people ask that. I can't choose one. I have so many top favorites that I love so much, I can't pick one over the other. Tyler asks if I knew that there was another Queen Mary before the RMS Queen Mary. Yes. In fact, there was a... There was a freight vessel on the River Clyde called... Uh, I believe it was T.S. Queen Mary... Uh, and then Cunard really wanted to use that name, so they convinced the owner of that boat, I guess you would call it a boat, they convinced the owner of that boat to rename their ship Queen Mary II, uh, so that way they could name the ocean liner RMS Queen Mary. Now, the owner of that boat wasn't too happy, but back then... Everybody was a monarchist. Everybody, you know, felt pride for their nation and stuff. So, uh, so it, it wasn't, it wasn't too much of a bad thing for the owner to to change the name of his boat to Queen Mary too, if it was to benefit, you know, Her Majesty the Queen and the ship itself, because um, it because the ship it was certainly going to be the pride of Scotland. That's for sure. Because the the um, the people of Clyde Bank and Glasgow were, you know, they put their all into the construction of the Queen Mary. So even the even the owner of the original Queen Mary would have been happy to give away the name. Not ecstatic, granted, because he really did love having the name Queen Mary, but.
Oh, wow, so they must have uh, filmed the Winds of War ab aboard the Queen Mary. Dangerous Brian says, so what did that man do when Cunard used the name Queen Mary II? Well, Queen Mary II came over a half century later, so I'm sure the original um, Queen Mary II... I don't even think it exists. Um, yeah, I don't think it exists. I would look it up, but if I type Queen Mary 2, all that's going to show up is the ocean liner. Um, but yeah, I don't think the original the original boat exists. I, I think it's long gone. Long gone. And plus, the yeah, plus, you know, like, uh, like Mr. Blue says... The owner probably died, you know, it was well over. It was like, what, 1936 to 2004? The guy is no longer alive. Yeah. Oh, B Mr. Blue says it exists. All right, let me see. I was gonna look it up and I was like, eh, maybe not, but I will. I think I have to look TS. Ah, there it is. TS Queen Mary. Oh, so he went back from naming it Queen Mary 2 to just Queen Mary. Interesting. Because whoever owned the ship, or the boat at the time, or whatever, I don't know if it's a ship or a boat. It looks like a ship, but, you know, it could just be for rivers, so it could be a boat. But, um, but it looks like the original owner of the Queen Mary 2... Maybe he was, maybe the next owner was able to name it back to just Queen Mary when the original RMS Queen Mary retired. Interesting. Wow, it's still around. That's just crazy. What's funny is it's, it, it's been painted the Cunard colors. It almost has the same Cunard livery. Well, it, or at least used to. There was a time when it looked like it did. Yeah. They're probably because they took pride, honestly, that they had a ship, you know, with a similar name that was the pride of the nation. So whoever owned it at the time was probably like, let's paint this with the Cunard colors. Trace asks if I like your profile picture. Honestly, on my phone it's so tiny I can't see. I don't. I don't know what anybody's profile pictures are. It's way too small. Oh, it's your school bus. Oh, okay. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Have a good night, Sid Hearth. Time to top up my cuppa. This is such smooth tea. I love it. Yeah, today is certainly a warm and lazy day. But I can't afford to be lazy. I got lots of stuff to do. I have to do some bit of housework. And then I have a, a phone call to make later today.
why it says that uh, his profile picture is the forward part of Titanic in Sunset. Nice. I wish I could see it. It's all, it's just so small. This is a strong little engine just pulling that whole train. May not be prototypically accurate to run a train that long with an engine that tiny, but it's fun. You know what's weird is I already feel full. Like, I still have these three digestives to eat, which I'm going to do it because they're probably melting already. But, um... But I feel full. Hmm. I have a feeling that in the coming month, I'll be on the verge of a lot of really good news. So... Eventually, I'll be able to share that with you. I can't right now, but it'd be fun. I'm getting chocolate all over my hands now. Tyler, thank you so much. Tyler says, four Queen Marys. HMS Queen Mary, TS Queen Mary, RMS Queen Mary, and Queen Mary 2. Skadoo says, any future videos in the works? Oh, lots of different future videos. I, believe me, oh, I have so many on a list of things to do that I'm probably going to be busy for the rest of the year, honestly. Um, you know, I have the Yarrow Project videos that are coming out. Um, I have a video about the Spruce Goose, a video about Oceanic, a video about Johann von Olden Barnevelt, um, a video about... Uh, what was it? Um, RMS Campania. And then various other smaller videos about train wrecks and... And... Um, uh, and ship disasters. Um, various videos about the operation of the Queen Mary. You know, just yesterday I posted a video about ventilation of, of ocean liners, and I mostly spoke about Queen Mary because that's the one thing I, I know a lot more about. But um, but there will be other videos like that, you know, where I'll be talking about how, electric, how electrical stuff worked, how plumbing worked, how the kitchens worked and how they fed people, and... Oh, there is an unlimited <laughs> amount of stuff... And then I have a series that I barely make videos on. It's historic places. I think on there I have I have like uh, the Yerba Buena Cove of San Francisco. Um, I have the just did a video recently. What was it? Benson Hotel. I want to do a video about Golden Gate Park and how that was created. It was an interesting story. It takes place in the Victorian age, so it's the same, you know, same time frame I usually work in on my channel. Um, eventually, I want to do a video about the Golden Gate Bridge itself and how that was built. Um, so just basically like an unlimited supply of videos. And then I'm hoping maybe later this year when the Queen Mary reopens, I'm going to go down there 
to film the whole ship as much of it as I possibly can to get a full, complete record of what the ship looks like in 4K high definition. And the goal there is to make several different kinds of videos out of it. Uh, with more footage, I can show more interesting things that I probably can't find on the online or anything like that. Um, but the other thing, too, is when I go down there, I really want to visit Hotel Del Coronado and film that so I can make a video about that. Um, so lots and lots of videos in the works. Ooh, ocean liner dude. Yeah, neck pain is not fun. I've had that before. I used to have this habit where I would crack my neck, so I would like tilt my neck and I would crack it. And I remember one time I was driving to work and I felt the need to crack my neck and I cracked my neck and felt this immediate electric shock down my body. And I was in so much pain from the base of my skull. I was in so much pain. I had to I, thankfully, I was right there near the parking lot of, of my work. So I pulled in, stopped the car, and I just remember just sitting there, just, just, I was in so much pain. I don't know if I, if I was crying or what. It was so painful. I had to go to the doctor and, uh, cause I couldn't go into work that day. I had to call out right then and there. I could not go in. And I went to, to see my doctor and I had in the process of cracking my neck, I had torn the muscle tissue from this corner of my skull. I had torn it off the skull. Oh, man. That was the worst several months of my life. It was like three months of healing I had to do. I had to wear this neck brace so I didn't move my head very much. Uh, I couldn't sleep. I was so sleep deprived those three months because I was in so much pain and I was on painkillers that didn't really do anything. Oh man, that was horrible. Horrible. Ugh. Sorry, it's just the memories come flooding back. <laughs> Needless to say, since, since then I have never cracked my neck ever again. I do not have that habit anymore. That was so bad. Nick says, when I was a kid, me and my mom stayed at Del Coronado and drove up to Long Beach to see Queen Mary, one of my favorite memories. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Ocean Liner dude. Yeah, maybe you will. Yeah, we'll see. It's, it's not guaranteed yet if I'm even going. Uh, it does cost a lot of money to go down there. Money is not something I have. Um... I might have connections of people who can take me down there so I don't have to buy a plane ticket because buying a plane ticket, frankly, can't do. I don't have the money for a plane ticket. But uh, but I do have family down there I really want to see. And so I have a friend that might end up driving me down there because he might be going to visit friends and stuff too. Um, Glenn says, today is Jubilee Day. Yes, I know. I'm having, uh, I'm having some Queen Elizabeth tea to mark the start of the Jubilee. So that's uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. So I'm having some Queen Elizabeth tea to mark that today. Um, let's build to say, hey Alex, where is your dream place to live? Oddly enough, I'm living in my dream place. Uh, I've always wanted to live up north uh, and then in the Pacific Northwest, where it always rains, it's always cold, there's tons of trees and nature everywhere. I've always wanted to live up here, I live up here now, I'm happy. So, um, yeah. So, I don't have a, any other dream place to live, really. The only thing I can think of is, quite literally, the only thing I can think of is, I do have some aspiration to one day live in the UK. I, I want to live in either... England or Scotland um, I don't have a specific city necessarily um, but I mean I don't know uh, you know uh, Edinburgh would be nice uh, 
beautiful city, lots of history there. So I don't know, maybe maybe that'll be the next goal is uh, is to someday live in the UK. <laughs> you know, maybe live in Edinburgh or or some other nice city. Yeah, I don't know where, but but uh, but yeah, because um, uh, on my on my mother's side of the family, a, a lot of my family they come from the the UK, from England and and Scotland, and and a big portion of my family is also Irish on my mom's side. So I've always had kind of a, an affinity for you know for Great Britain. Um, so yeah, you know. Oh yeah, Tyler, that doesn't sound good. Oh my goodness. Len says we're on a four day holiday here. Oh wow, that's nice. Mike says Belfast, Ireland. Yeah, you know, if I do my UK trip, Belfast is one of the places I plan to visit um, on the UK trip and see the Titanic stuff there. But I was looking at the restaurants because we were, my friend and I were kind of like, all right, we got to think where are we going to eat when we get there and that kind of thing. We're looking up online at the restaurants and I'm like, uh-uh. There was this one place. It was like a hamburger joint. And uh, I was looking at the hamburgers. I was like, that's not a hamburger. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know what that is, but I do not want to eat that. <laughs> and the pizza. They had a pizza place, and I was like, that's not a pizza. Like, I don't even know what that is, but that's not a pizza. We'd probably have to eat at the fancier places if we went to Belfast. Because my friend and I, we'll, we'll eat at, you know, at grab-and-go places and stuff, but there are certain places where it's better just to spend the money and eat somewhere really nice. Um, so let's build, I would, but I don't, I don't have the materials I need to build anything. I need lots of different stuff. I need paints. I need uh, just other kinds of building materials. Mostly paints, honestly. Um, but also... I need to order like special O scale doors and windows uh, that that are from the time frame that the model will take. I don't have the money for that stuff, frankly. It'll just have to wait. Let's build. I was into Legos when I was a little kid, but as I got older, Legos aren't my thing. The Queen was born in Edinburgh? I thought she was born in Windsor Castle. Oh, see you later, Scudster. Ciao. I've never said that to anybody before. Ciao. Oh. I'm trying not to get my hands covered in chocolate, so I'm trying to hold this in a, such a way that I just keep dropping it. So about nine minutes from now, I'll end the live stream. 
because I do have some stuff to get to. And frankly, I can already see the views are dropping off. <laughs> People are like, I'm done. But... It is a warm day, and I do need to drink a lot of water. This The tea is good, but... If you've drank nothing but tea in a day, you'll start to feel it. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Ocean Liner, dude. Let's Build says, what is your favorite monument in the U.S.? Do you mean monument literally, like an, like a national monument? Um, if you if you mean a literal national monument, I would say the Statue of Liberty. I'm not much for for national monuments though. Yeah, I would say Statue of Liberty, but I'm not much of a monument person. The reason why is because a lot of the monuments um, they're they're things, if you know what I mean. I like engineering, I like steam power, I like architecture of certain kinds. So while the Link while the Lincoln Memorial may be a national monument, the architecture doesn't interest me much. The engineering doesn't interest me much. I'm very specific about stuff, so that's why I'm not really much of a monuments person. And the Statue of Liberty is the only one I could really think I'm interested in because it took a lot of skill, artwork, and engineering to build it. Um, and the fact that it's still standing today. You know, before I started this stream, <laughs> I had to clean the tracks on this thing. And there's different ways you can do it. Uh, when I don't have time, I just, I have a track cleaner. It's like a little scrubby thing. It, it has the texture of like a pencil eraser. Um, but you use that and you scrub all the tracks and that removes a lot of the dirt but the thing is is that there's so much tracks that the thing gets dirty before you're even done but it, it does enough of a job that the trains run for the most part but um but today i decided to do a different technique because i i, I had already gotten that scrubbing thing dirty all over again and i i knew that there was an excess of dirt on the tracks so I got some paper towels, and what I did was I I went around and and um, with the paper towel covering my fingers, I used my fingers to run the length of the track. And I swear, such a layer of black soot came off of the rails. It was so the rails were so dirty. Um, and you know, I was really thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I understand if there's dust. I understand if there's various particulate, but what I don't understand is why it's always black and it's always got this soot texture to it. Like, what is on these tracks that it does that? That's something I don't know, you know? 
And it seems that after just just a couple hours of running the trains around and around and around, it, they get black all over again. And the, the, the wheels on the cars are made of metal, the same type of nickel-plated silver... No, no not nickel-plated silver. Nickel-plated steel that the rails are made out of. Same materials, nothing weird. There's no, there's no rubber or plastic touching the rails. But, so why do the rails turn black? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Glenn says, I think if you come to the UK, you would love the food. Our hamburgers and pizzas are the same. I, I, I don't know. Not, from what I've seen so far, maybe I haven't seen too much, but from what I've seen so far, I'd say that in the U.S. our hamburgers and pizzas are quite different. Um, but you know what my friend and I are looking forward to? So there, here's what my friend and I want to do. For every city we go to, we want to go to a local fish and chips place and try the fish and chips because we heard that depending on what parts or what countries you're in in the U.K., the fish and chips will change depending on the area and how they like to to produce it it's relatively the same i understand it's potatoes and and fish but the the methods and the style is what changes um and frankly i've never had authentic you know british fish and chips i've had fish and chips before but in the u.s fish and chips aren't like what they are in the uk the the chips don't have that vinegar that they put like we don't put that on ours. It's just French fries and and f fried fish, you know. But um, but yeah. So we, so my friend and I are definitely very interested. Every city we go to, we want to try fish and chips. We we were even joking that we're probably by the end of the vacation, we're gonna be so exhausted from eating fish and chips. <laughs> but <clears throat> that is one of our little aspirations. We we seek to um to uh, uh, achieve. This is uh, basically O scale, but it's running on HO scale tracks. Um, and so that's what makes it the, the scale, that's what makes it ON30. So that stands for O narrow gauge 30 inch. Um, so yeah, that's the scale, ON30. Um, I like it because uh, since it's a narrow gauge, it can fit in a smaller space, um, and yet it's still a nice large scale to work with, so it's easy to, uh, to manage. Uh, Brian asks, have you ever, have you seen Top Gun Maverick? No, I haven't. I, I don't plan to. I, I'm, I, you know, I grew up watching Top Gun, the original movie with my dad and, and stuff, but, uh, but I'm not a Top Gun fan. I'm not really into military movies, to be honest. So, um, so yeah, I don't have plans to watch it, really. Glenn says, you must try Haggis and black pudding. I heard things about haggis. You know, I'm always the kind of person that's like, I will try something. I will try something to understand it. So I will try haggis. I've never heard of black pudding, but I have a feeling it's something bready because over there puddings are not the same as what they are here. Puddings over there are, are like a bread that you bake or something. It's like a pastry that kind of puffs out. Kind of, kind of reminds me of American popovers, actually, except they have a big hole in the middle. Yeah. So yeah, haggis. I forgot what haggis is. When I was in culinary school, we, we learned some British foods. I don't remember off the top of my head what they were. We, you know, every, we had this one class where every week we had to practice a food from a certain country or region. And, uh, 
and I remember the week we did British food. We did fish and chips, but that wasn't the same. We didn't have that special vinegar that you put on the chips, so we just made French fries on the side. But so we did things like that. But um, but then we 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 made something else. Ah, beef Wellington. We made beef Wellington. Yeah. That turned out pretty okay. That was very labor intensive. Mike says brains. Wyatt says, I think it's a sausage. I'll look it up real quick. <laughs> Everyone's going to give me like these nightmare ingredients. They're like, oh, it's bone marrow stewed in the intestines of a pig. <laughs> Let's see. Haggis. Okay, so it's a, it's a savory pudding containing sheep's pluck minced with onion, oatmeal, suet, spices, and salt mixed with stock cooked while traditionally encased in an animal's stomach. Though now an artificial casing is often used instead. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's like a sausage. You know, I'm not all that put off by it. I mean, I am, you know, half Hispanic. I grew up eating some stuff that most people won't eat. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, so I, I am willing to try it. All right. Ooh, blood. Oh, geez. Yeah, there's, um... <clears throat> some... Some of my family members would eat, like, blood sausage and stuff. I was never into blood sausage, but I do think if it was used moderately, uh, like in haggis, I might actually enjoy it. Yeah, Mike, you know, usually when it comes to, like, to food, sometimes the ingredients sound really out there, but the end result is something that's really delicious. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm always willing to try stuff, because sometimes you just really never know. Like, if I told most people what is in chicken mole, they would look at me like I'm from out of this world. I grew up on chicken mole, and the kind that we that we cooked in my family was always a... Um, a, a chocolate and peanut version and uh, not chocolate necessarily cocoa and peanut version i should say cocoa because chocolate is not the same thing as cocoa even though it uses cocoa to make chocolate but um but uh cocoa yeah so you know you, you tell people oh this sauce contains cocoa and peanuts and they're like what you know but um but then you have the thing and it's so delicious you're just like how have i never had this before you know so you never really know, you know. If you try something, you might really like it. Tyler says I want to have lamb rare with mint sauce. You know, you laugh, but I that's one thing I haven't had before. I haven't had lamb with mint sauce, and that was a a very traditional fancy fine dining meal. And uh, I've had lamb cooked many different ways, but never with mint sauce. So if, if I get that chance, because I know they still sometimes serve it on the Queen Mary 2 as they go across the Atlantic. So if they do that day, I'm definitely having lamb with mint sauce. Um, but yeah. All right, folks, I think it is that time for me to say goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye. So long to you and me. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. -E. Anyway, um, 
Yeah, it's time. Yeah, everybody's gonna go. Everybody's gotta go now. Yeah, I have stuff to do. I have to clean. I have to get stuff ready. Um, next video is Friday. I think it's gonna be why I fell in love with Queen Mary. There will be some kind of fun, um, fun uh, live stream on Saturday. I might I might live stream a walkthrough of Titanic for you guys to see. Uh, Sunday is the next tea time. And we'll go from there. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Oh, and watch my trailer for The Queen Mary Story. I put that out a couple days ago.